Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're playing Did You Know They Make Wine? Again. Leon picked eight different wines from countries that are not commonly associated with winemaking, and I'm going to taste them blind, rate them, and see whether I can identify the grape variety or maybe even the country. So let's go. <music> For a long time wine production was limited to Europe, with a few exceptions, which led people to believe that it might not be possible to make wine anywhere else in the world. This is clearly not true. The wine itself is from Asia and some of the oldest winemaking countries are China, Egypt and Persia, places that are not really famous for their wines today. When Europeans started to discover the new world, they often took the wine with them. And today, six out of the 10 biggest wine producing countries in the world are from the new world. I don't think that any of these wines will be from the more well-known new world countries, but I don't really know. I'm not sure whether I should be excited or scared, but let's start tasting. I think I'm going to start with wine number one and finish with wine number eight, but that's just my way of approaching things. I'm going to rate these wines and I'll show you some information on my rating system below this video. I will also show you some information on the price and everything you need to know about the wine below this video because I don't really know right now, so I won't be able to necessarily tell you in the video, but you'll find everything down below. Now let's pour. White wine. The wine is quite golden in color, which doesn't tell me all that much, but it is golden. This wine actually smells quite familiar to me. It smells of lemon zest, peaches, bacon fat, and there are also notes of spice coming through. So I think this wine was either aged in barriques or maybe in stainless steel in contact with oak ships. On the palate, it's quite rich and intense. There is quite a good amount of alcohol, so I would say it's probably 13 and a half, 14 of alcohol. And it also has some freshness, so, so there is some vibrancy coming through. It's not flat, it feels quite good. I know my voice sounds a little bit strange and that's because I have a bit of a cold, but I think I can handle a blind tasting even with a little bit of a cold, okay? Well, we'll see. I don't really know whether this is maybe something completely exotic, a grape variety that I've never heard of or not. But for me, it actually feels quite a bit like Chardonnay. It could also be a Pinot, like a Pinot Blanc or a Pinot Gris that was aged in contact with oak. But it actually feels quite Chardonnay-esque to me. I would say it's probably from a warmer climate, maybe from an exotic area, something tropical or subtropical, because it's a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more rich in flavor. There's also a little bit of banana flavor coming through, which probably isn't because it was grown next to banana trees, but because a warmer climate Chardonnay often has this touch of banana flavor. So let's have a look. Let's see. What is this? Yes. Chardonnay from Peru. <laughs> okay, very good. This is Chardonnay from Peru. The wine is actually called Intipalca. It's from the Valle de Sol in Peru, a region that I don't really know. So if you know anything about that region, let me know down below. And it's 13% of alcohol. So I was a bit high on the alcohol and it's Chardonnay. So really solid Chardonnay. And I think I was pretty solid, pretty much spot on with my guess. I just realized that I forgot to rate this wine while tasting it blind. I'm sorry, I will do better on the next ones. I would rate this 85 points. I think it's really good. It's a very interesting Chardonnay. Is it top notch? Is it one of the greatest Chardonnays in the world? No way, but it is really good. Good stuff. So let's move on to the second wine, which is again a white wine. And that's all I know. The wine is quite light in color. It's not as golden as the previous wine, but much lighter. The color in white wine doesn't always tell you lots of things, but it gives some indication on winemaking, age, and sometimes also on the grape variety. In this case, I don't really know from the color alone what it is, but as soon as I put my nose into the glass, I get this grassy herbaceous flavor coming through. There's also some exotic fruit flavor, but it's not super opulent. It's more like gooseberries and a little bit of 
kiwi flavors coming through. On the palate, it's really fresh and vibrant. There's not a whole lot of body. It's more light. It feels like it was quite early harvested and it definitely feels like Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is one of those grape varieties that can be fairly easy to identify in a blind tasting just because it has this mix of fruit aroma and green grassy notes and this to me really ticks all those boxes. I don't think it could be much other wines so I'm not going to hedge, I'm just going to go straight for it. I think it's Sauvignon Blanc. It's probably not from New Zealand or from the Loire. I'm guessing that this is from a place that well is not well known for winemaking but that's quite difficult because I think Sauvignon Blanc is pretty much grown everywhere all around the world. It feels like it is a bit cooler in its expression so I don't think it's from a super hot region but maybe that is also because it was harvested earlier. If you harvest early you tend to get less ripe fruit flavors and less alcohol and this one certainly feels like it is yeah, less ripe and less alcoholic. So I'm going to say Sauvignon Blanc and I'm going to say, I don't know, Sweden? <laughs> I have no clue where it's from. It could be from pretty much anywhere in the world, but I think it is a cooler climate, probably. Let's have a look. All right, man, Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> But it's from India, so not necessarily a cool climate, even though India has cooler pockets and areas that are not as hot. It's certainly low in alcohol with 12.5% and it's pretty good. So far I've done really well on the blind tasting part, but I again forgot to rate this wine while tasting it blind. I'm sorry, I'll definitely do better on the next wine. I rate this 83 points. I think it is a good Sauvignon Blanc. It's one of the best Sauvignon Blancs from India that I've ever tasted, but that's because I haven't tasted all that many. But I think it's really good stuff. I don't think it is very good or anything above that, but it's pleasurable. It's a nice wine. We're moving on to wine number three, and I'm probably going to clean my glass a little bit because the previous wine was quite aromatic. Now let's taste it. I have the feeling my streak is going to end here because this is quite a bit more difficult to get my hands around. The color again is a little bit more golden, it's a bit more dark. Not as dark as the first one, but definitely darker than the second. On the nose, it doesn't have a lot of varietal aroma coming through. It smells of apple, pear, there's also a little bit of smokiness coming through. It's kind of yeah, it's not bland, but it's not super expressive. I also get some oxidative notes that might come from old barrels. It doesn't really have the roasted notes that go with new barriques, for example. On the palate, it's rich, round, full-bodied. There's quite a bit of alcohol there. I think this is probably 14, 14.5% and the acidity is fairly low. What further suggests oxidative handling is the slight volatile acidity notes. It smells a little bit of glue, so it's just a touch of it, but it is definitely there. But what is it? I have no idea. I think it is a wine from a warm climate. It could be a grape variety like Grenache Blanc or Semillon that doesn't really bring a lot of flavor in and of itself and brings quite a lot of body and richness to a wine. It doesn't really feel new world because it's slightly unclean. So it doesn't really feel like it's from Australia. Not that Australia would be one of those exotic wine making countries anymore, but it feels like, yeah, it's handled like a wine that is from an old world country. So considering the topic of this tasting, it could be from Eastern Europe slash Asia or from the Middle East, for example. So. It's difficult to say exactly. Maybe it's one of those grape varieties that grow there and that grow nowhere else. But it reminds me quite a bit of Grenache Blanc. So I'm just going to say Grenache and let's have a look. Mm, 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 mm. Big bottle, that's for sure. Syria. 
Grand Vin de Siri. So this is not Siri, the lady that works at Apple. It's Syria, the country that is located where I said it might be from the Middle East or Eastern Asia. And the grape varieties in this blend are Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. So a mix of the two grape varieties that I previously had, but I didn't really get any of the Sauvignon Blanc flavor. Chardonnay for me is more, well, more similar to Grenache Blanc, what I had down as a guess. But this is a big wine. It has almost 15% of alcohol. And that's kind of what I said. So this is a very ripe and concentrated style. So I'm not beating myself up over this. So if my French doesn't fail me, the back label explains that the wine is from a region that was once famous for the production of wine during the Greek Roman times. And the winery is now kind of trying to continue that legacy. I don't think this is a great wine. I think it lacks a little bit of balance. There is acidity missing, but I think it's good. I would rate it 84 points. It's solid. I think it could be even better if they maybe pick a little earlier and keep the definition of the grape varieties that they use a little better. And yeah, I promise the next wine will be rated blind. I forgot, but to be honest, I don't know any of these wines, so it's not really that the label influences my judgment, but I will do better on the next wine. Promise. So before I move on to the next one, if you want to learn more about wine, then please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out, so please do. So let's move on to wine number four, which is still a white one. Pretty dark white wine. So this is again quite golden in color, suggesting that it might be an orange wine or that it was exposed to quite a bit of oxygen. If you expose white wine to oxygen, it will turn a little bit more brown or golden. And this might have happened here. Okay, so this is very good. It's a very complex wine. It smells of smoke. There's also notes of green apple, pear coming through, but there's also flavors of caramel and lots of different elements that all come together. On the palate, it's actually rich. It has quite a bit of substance, but it finishes very fresh. It has quite a bit of acidity in the end. So that lifts it all up again. So there's pretty much everything there in this wine. It feels like a really well-made wine. But when it comes to the grape variety and the origin, I struggle a little bit. This is quite difficult to identify because I think this might be from a grape variety that I don't know, that I'm not familiar with. It has the yeah, flavor and the texture also of Grüner Vetliner a little bit or Albarino. I think it's not a super aromatic grape variety, but one that brings quite a lot of funky flavors, quite a lot of complexity without showing a lot of fruit flavor. And it maintains its acidity quite well. So there's good freshness there. There's body and there's acidity, which is just something that I really like. So I'm going to say Albarino from a place that is warm, but also has well, sea influence, a little bit like Portugal. But this can't be from Portugal, otherwise it doesn't have anything to do in this tasting. Um, and where else could it be from? I have no idea. I, I, I just don't know. I'm just going to say Albarino from Coastal Vineyard somewhere. And I'm going to rate it 90 points. Really good stuff. But now let's look at what's inside the bag. Whoa, okay. Okay, I wasn't all wrong, but well, this is from the Azores. Azores? Azores? I don't know how you say it in English. It's Azorean. So it is from the Atlantic Ocean, from an island, and it doesn't really tell me which grape variety has been used here. It wasn't oaked, that's what it says, and it has low sulfides, but no grape variety mentioned. So I had a look online and this seems to be Arinto dos Azores and Vedejo, um, mainly Arinto, and it cost 20 US dollars roughly, and it was rated 91 points by Robert Parker, if you want to know. I wonder, are the Azores really a place that isn't well known for winemaking? I would actually say they are probably quite well known for winemaking and they probably have a long history making wine, but 
Yeah. So we're moving on to wine number five, and this might be the first red wine. No, it's a white one. Okay. So this is very light in color, and it looks like it has quite a lot of CO2. I don't know whether this is a sparkling wine. I guess it isn't, but there's quite a lot of bubbles in that wine. Well, I don't know whether it has anything to do with my cold, but this feels a little bit bland. I mean, not in a bad way. It's quite delicate. There's not a lot of flavor on the nose, on the palate. There's not a lot going on, but it still feels nice. It's kind of really well made, very clean, very neat. There is a little bit of flavor of white peach, green apple on the palate. There's a fresh acidity. The alcohol seems fairly low. Um, the acidity is not too high. It's quite balanced and just very, yeah, very delicate and elegant. So what could this be? It feels to me a little bit like Müller Thurgau, Pinot Blanc, or maybe even Fermentino or something like that. It is not super expressive on the nose, but there is good flavor there. There's not a lot of acidity there, but there is good freshness there. So it's a wine that is very balanced and in, it, in its way a little bit, yeah, a little bit difficult to pin down. So I'm just going to say Müller Thurgau from a cool climate was certainly harvested early or is from a cooler climate because it, there's not a lot of ripeness there. So I'm going to say England, Müller Thurgau and if this is from England and it's Müller Thurgau then it's actually a pretty good wine. I would rate this 84 points. So it's good, it's not great, but it's, it's really good. So let's have a look what it is. Oh man, it's from Japan, I think, it's Koshu, so Sol Luchet Koshu 2019 from Japan. Well, so this is Japanese Koshu and it's actually quite distinct because it is so elegant and balanced. I've tasted Koshu before and this taste very similar to the wines that I've tasted in the past. I think it's a really well-made wine. I think it's just not very exciting. But I guess that with Japanese cuisine, especially with the lighter, more, yeah, more delicate dishes, this actually goes really well. So let's see whether we're actually moving on to red wine territory with this wine. Wine number six. It's a red. So this is quite dark in color. It's not completely opaque, but it is fairly dark. It smells of blackberries, cherries. There's also a little bit of tobacco leaf coming through, a little bit of black tea notes. So it is actually quite complex and I kind of like it. On the palate, it's actually quite rough. So the tannins are a little bit grainy, a little bit harsh, and it feels a little bit cooked. There's also some chocolate notes coming through. So this feels like a wine that was quite manipulated, not necessarily in a very good way. Um, but it might just be an entry level product. It doesn't have the quality of a really outstanding wine. So where would something like this come from? I would say maybe it's from Eastern Europe. There are some countries that produce good red wines in a similar way. Bulgaria, Romania, for example. It could also be from the Middle East. It could be from a place like um, like Turkey, for example. It could also be Lebanon. I don't think it is from anywhere outside of the old, old world. I don't think it's like a very pristine, very delicately handled uh, New World wine feels to me more old world. In the past, I've tasted quite a few Turkish wines. So I'm just going to say this is from Turkey. Turkey is actually one of the oldest wine making countries in the world. The Mount Ararat is the mountain where Noah's Ark stranded, according to legend. And uh, he back then planted some vineyards. So this refers back to the long, long, long history of Turkey with winemaking. Obviously today, it's not 
as much associated with producing great wines, but there are some really good wines coming out of the country. I don't think this is a great example if it's from Turkey, but I would say Turkey and um, those wine names are quite difficult to pronounce. So I would say maybe it's Ukus Gözü. That's a great variety and maybe that's that. So I'm going to rate this wine 80 points. I think it's good, but just barely. It's not a great example. So I think there are definitely better wines coming out of Turkey if it's from Turkey. And yeah, it's it just lacks a bit of complexity, concentration and length. But now let's have a look at what it is. <laughs> okay, so this is Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon Sidi Brahim and it's from Tunis. Tunisie. So yeah, geographically I'm not completely wrong. When it comes to grape varieties, I am. Doesn't look like a very high-end product, to be honest, but yeah, it's definitely not Turkish couscousy. So after this terrible defeat, let's move on to wine number seven. And maybe I'll be lucky this time. So this is again quite dark in color. It's not completely opaque, but it is fairly dark. On the nose, it smells of blackberries, cherries, but there's also like uh, flavors of plums coming through, a little bit of spice. On the palate, it's rich and grippy. There's good freshness there. There's quite a lot of balance. I gotta say, this is really well made. Whew. It's difficult. I would say maybe it's from Bulgaria. It could also be from another country in that area, like Georgia, for example. But I'm just going to take the risk here. I'm going to say this again feels quite Turkish to me, but opposed to the one that we had earlier, this actually feels like it is higher in quality. It is a really well-made wine, lots of expression, intensity, good structure, everything is there. So I quite like this. I might look like a fool now, but I'm going to say this is from Turkey and it is Ökus Gözü. And I'm going to rate this 90 points. I think it is a really good wine. Let's have a look. I did it. Victory at last. <laughs> so, so this is Yakuts. Ökus Gözü Bokaskere, another grape variety that I didn't mention, but I said Ökus Gözü, which is good enough in this case, for me at least. And it's from Kavaklidere, and it's from Turkey. I gotta say, I'm really impressed by this wine, even though the label, in my opinion, looks kind of cheap, but the quality of the wine, I think, is pretty good. It's really there, um, there's quite a lot going on there. And if you wouldn't know that it's from Turkey, you might think this is a really good wine from the south of France, for example. It is complex, complete and very good. And I'm so proud of myself now. So let's move on to the last wine of the lineup. I don't really care whether I get this right because I got the Turkish wine. Okay, this is pretty light in color. I can actually see my hands through the wine which might actually help because, well, there are not so many really light colored red wines around. So let's, let's see when I can identify it. So this is not super easy, but the color really helps. When I have a light colored red wine in my glass, I'm immediately pointed at Pinot Noir, Grenache. There could also be Nebbiolo, or there could be something a bit more out there like Trollinger, or some other grape varieties like Trousseau, for example. But I think this, for me, feels more like Pinot Noir or Grenache, as it has the flavor of strawberries, a little bit of raspberries. It's quite fruity, quite, quite a lot of berry fruit flavor coming through. There's no tar or licorice notes like you would get from Nebbiolo. It's also not a lot of oak here, which is something that is quite frequently used for Pinot Noir and Grenache. So it's a bit tricky. I don't think this is a high-end wine by any means, but what grape variety is it? 
I don't know. Tasting it again, I don't really get the freshness and vibrancy that you would get from Pinot Noir. It feels a little bit more rich and round, which is something that I would associate more with Grenache. So I'm just going to say it's a Grenache, even though it could be something else. And Grenache is planted in lots of places in the world. And I've no idea where this wine is from. It feels a little bit cooler, so it doesn't feel like a wine that was uh, exposed to a lot of heat, or it feels like a wine that was harvested a little bit earlier. It doesn't feel very serious. I don't think this was aged in oak barrels, so it doesn't really, well, it wasn't really treated like a high-end wine would be treated. This feels more like an entry-level wine. I would rate this 80 points. It is pretty good, but it's a little bit bland too. And let's have a look what it is. So, oh, damn it. I was so close and then I took the wrong turn. So this is Pinot Noir from Campania in Brazil. The winery is called Miolo and yeah, I was close, but then I took a completely wrong turn. Well, smelling it again, it f smells quite a bit like Pinot, but yeah, I made my decision um, and I was wrong. This doesn't feel like a high-end Pinot Noir, but I don't really get a lot of information on it on the back label. It doesn't really say whether it was aged in oak, but I don't think it was. It feels more entry level. It's well made, but it's not something I would get excited about. I think it's pretty entry level when it comes to Pinot. But it's not bad and i've heard quite a lot of good things about wines from brazil so i definitely want to taste more wines from there and this is just the start so this was an exciting tasting again it brought my horizon and i tasted some wines that i've never tasted before which is always nice my favorites in the tasting were this one the branco vulcanico and when it comes to reds I actually like the Yakut de Ökusgözü Okaskere, which yeah, was a really solid red wine. There were some other really nice whites and reds here. I thought the Koshu was really interesting. The Peruvian Chardonnay was also quite nice. And yeah, the reds, I mean, yeah, there was not as much of a big selection, but the Turkish one definitely won the prize for the red wines. But yeah, overall, I gotta say the wine world is getting bigger and more colorful and that is a great thing. So I'm going to try to taste more wines from all of these places in the future. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what is the weirdest wine place that you've ever had a wine from? Comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.